with all of the recent woes that Xbox has suffered as far as Mindshare is concerned, and we covered it in part one. Can X Cloud and can Game Pass save it? Let's get into it. What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? It's your boy MM2K back again with another one. Do me a huge favor. You know what I'm saying? Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when your boy's dropping these doses. I appreciate all of y'all straight up, because guess what? I'm not too proud to ask. Let's get into it. All right, so this is part two of the two-part series where I look deep into the Microsoft gaming strategy, all right? Now, in the last uh, episode, we talked a little bit about the previous strategy, which was Grab the hardcore first, get mindshare with them first, give them the things that they want out of your products and services, then get them talking about those products and services in a way that will capture the casual. That's how you see if it is success in this whole console war thing, right? And we talked about how Microsoft has abandoned that, you know what I'm saying? at the latter part of this generation with Phil Spencer at hand, Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft. And we talked about how they're moving forward with that strategy going into next generation on, on onward, right? And we also looked at why that might be problematic because that strategy is unproven. The complete opposite is what won generations before and has, you know, if you even look beyond the console war, has granted success to any console maker, you know what I mean, within any generation at any point in time, is grabbing the minds of the hardcore first and have them as catalysts to spread your word to the uh, casuals or your good graces, rather, to the casuals. But regardless of all that, there could be a reason. There could be a reason that Microsoft is abandoning that and expecting a groundswell of casuals to just jump on board, jump on the Xbox bandwagon. And that, my friends, is the combo that they feel of Game Pass and xCloud to the gaming community, okay? But here's the thing. They know that this is not gonna happen overnight. Microsoft, for all intents and purposes, and it may have inadvertently let you know you know what I'm saying? That they don't expect this to be, to create that groundswell that they feel is going to turn things around for them until 2022. Now, why do I say that? Well, just look at some things on the surface. Again, and don't, as I've been telling you on previous videos, and again, you ain't got to agree wholeheartedly with me about what I feel about Phil's job so far at this point in time, but just listen to, just look at the signs, just look at the evidence, look at the science. Understand the wrath of the math, okay? When you look at everything that's been put out there, they have deals right now where they're basically giving Game Pass away. No, not just regular Game Pass, but this ultimate Game Pass that not only includes, uh, I believe, Xbox Live with Game Pass, but includes Game Pass on PC. Now, I could be wrong about the Xbox Live part, but I, I, but regardless, you get both subscription services, the Game Pass on PC and the Game Pass uh, on console combined together. And again, I believe Xbox Live is included as well. You get all of that just for a dollar? And you can lock it down for just for a dollar to up and upgrade all your current services within this helm all the way up to 2022. Now, why I say that's the magic date is because also look at the studios that they acquired. Some of these studios may have already had stuff that they're working on. Granted, <laughs> uh, Bleeding Edge from Ninja Theory. And <laughs> from what I've seen in that game, again, I, could, I, I hope I'm wrong, but what I've seen in that game so far, not, it, it's it's not going to appease the fans. I know Xbox wanted to put something in people's hands right now, but as far as the stuff that people are thirsting for, that AAA banger, 
I want to even say captivating at the very least, whether it's triple or double A. Bleeding Edge does not look like to be in. But again, their focus isn't on it right now. They're letting you upgrade your, your subscription services to Game Pass Ultimate for just a dollar. They got acquired these studios, you know, just recently. And the stuff that Microsoft wants to flood its store with or flood its services with, with day one within Game Pass, that's not going to come to fruition overnight. And then you look at it too, when you look at the Game Pass Ultimate, it connects you to the Windows gaming version, the Windows Store version on PC. They're not connecting you to the Steam version. You know, they made this big announcement that, you know, they're going to be selling their stuff, a lot of their stuff day and date on Steam. But you don't get connected to the Steam version. You get the Windows Store version, baby. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And what, the thing with the Windows Store is that the Windows Store is in a mess. It needs a lot of fixing, okay? And don't expect that fixing to be done until when? 2022. Don't expect their studios to be cranking stuff out to win till 2022. And when does this Game Pass Ultimate upgrade for a dollar lock you in till? 2022. So that is the magic year where Xbox feels that all of this initiative, all these initiatives that they're taking, all the stuff that they're doing is going to come to fruition. Question is. One, can you even wait till 2022? I mean, if you're part of the Xbox brass that has been complaining about content and about specific AAA content, and you're like Halo, Gears, and Forza, it may be Fable, you know what I'm saying? Ain't the answer, Sway. We need to see your dedication to AAA IP, you putting them out there. And then you got Sony across the street talking about, yo, yo, check it out. Guess what we doing over here? We satisfy, we're satisfying the hardcore. We building our stuff to ground up from for the hardcore. And we can even say the word hardcore and your boss came, right? And then on top of that, you know what I'm saying? Again, you got all this stuff happening. Can you wait till 2022? I don't know. I just don't know. In addition to that, let's just say if you can wait till 2022 and all of a sudden you got these other services out there. I mean, let's look at it. Xbox is building itself to be your primary service either on console or on uh, PC. For console, PlayStation Now. I don't care what anybody says. They don't have to do it, but they're going to do it to stay relevant. At some point in time, they're going to stop. They're going to put their stuff in their day and date. They wouldn't be looking to upgrade their services to put stuff out there five years after the fact, or you know what I'm saying, or or or, or just to just to have old games on there. Especially because the PlayStation 4 lineup is going to be backwards compatible with the new PlayStation 5. So what would be the point of just upgrading PlayStation now just for old stuff? It doesn't make any sense. Stuff is going there day and day. Okay. Again, I try to tell y'all to educate yourselves. Understand what Sony says to publications opposed to what they say to investors. What they say to investors is golden. They suit it up and they dress it up for you. So don't just go strictly off and get hyped up off of these interviews. What they said to the investors... Gaming being niche and they had to get on the, the gravy train with the services. That's what they really mean. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. If the ecosystem is pumping out hardcore games and fan favorites, then you know what I'm saying? It don't matter if it's um, if it's playable beyond the console. Because PlayStation is going to make sure that you have uh, the con... That, well, I, I'll put it... Rather, I'll put it like this. They're going to make sure that you are completely benefited from having their console whether you can stream their games elsewhere they're going to make sure that the benefit of having their console is definitely relevant and is definitely seen they're not going to approach it like how xbox is we don't care if we sell you a console you're not going to get that from them so again 
don't fret about the day and date stuff, right? But even with that, if Sony goes day and date before 2022, what do you think is going to be the more revered service? PlayStation now. You got Ghost of Tsushima. You got Death Stranding. You got Last of Us 2. I mean, stop it. Is it, is it even a question? What is going to be the more appealing service? PlayStation now. So Xbox loses out there. Let's look at PC gamers. Okay. People want to talk about Stadia. They want to say Stadia is garbage. Stadia's... Okay, Stadia may have its issues as far as data caps are concerned. But you got to remember that Stadia has opened its platform to other services like Uplay Plus. That's a big deal. EA could jump on board. That's a big deal. Bethesda could jump on board. That's a big deal. Okay? You got to get your mind out. To, you got to get yourself uh, in the way that you think out of the mind of the console gamer. Understand that those services are a lot more appealing to the PC gamer than Xbox is. They might enjoy having uh, Halo, you know what I'm saying, on Steam and all that other stuff. But as far as games in general, you play plus. EA, Bethesda games are more revered on PC than Xbox ever will be, <laughs> okay? Sorry, it's just the way that it is. And if Stadia sucks in those services within the Stadia streaming platform, then that's gonna be more appealing on PC. But let's take Stadia out the picture. You now have Steam that is going to be doing streaming. They already got something in your hands with their remote play that you can ping off of their data centers right now via their beta service. Right now, I've tested it out, it works. So then, what if that gets rocking and rolling before 2022? Steam is gonna be the more lucrative service and Microsoft is putting their games on Steam. So imagine, I can, I can stream the best that Xbox has to offer without investing into their ecosystem on a routine basis and still stream their stuff. So again, Microsoft does not win with this strategy there. Wait, waiting out till 2022. And don't say MM2K it's okay if they're not the best they, stick, they can still do numbers. No, Microsoft is investing money. They don't have the ecosystem set up to be in second place or in last place all right they got to be number one somewhere they got to be number one somewhere you know what i'm saying nintendo found success as a secondary option they've been setting it up as a secondary option for a while but normally when it comes to these subscription services people like to pick their primary thing and hunker in and stay there so if I'm a gamer on console, I got my PlayStation Now service. Nintendo's even gonna be doing something. If I'm gonna pick a secondary service, I might roll with Nintendo. And then if I game on PC, we say, well, we'll get you on PC. No, baby, there's Stadia. And when you combine it with Uplay Plus and EA Origins or EA uh, Origins Premier, when that free streaming service becomes enabled in 2020 and Xbox still ain't rocking and rolling with the content, the combo of the free Stadia service along with the Uplay Plus and EA Origins or whoever else they did on their platform is going to be more appealing on PC. I'm sorry. Because Uplay Plus and EA Origins, they're gonna have a better lineup. EA Origins already has a better lineup than Game Pass on PC. Stop it. <laughs> Where does Microsoft win here with this strategy? So again, what I'm trying to do here with both of these entries is tell you and highlight for you without tapping into the synergy of the hardcore, Microsoft is hamstringing itself tremendously they're trying the strategy again that has failed before. It is failing them now, and it's going to fail them in the future with trying to mine 
to try to grab mind share with the casuals first. It ain't working now. It ain't going to work in the future. And then they think Game Pass and xCloud is going to come to the rescue. Game Pass and xCloud is not going to be popping until 2022. You're going to have services that's going to have better content on them by 2020. So with that being the case, how is Xbox going to win? Explain this to me. How do they win? They don't. And this is something that Phil and company are going to have to take seriously if they want to remain relevant in gaming. Because I'm going to tell you this much. If this falls flat on its face, there will be no more Xbox. So again, I urge everybody that wants to be content with the state of affairs that I get it. Y'all got to raise y'all voices, man. Y'all got to look at things from 5,000 feet. You got to look past the now. This ain't about PlayStation people barking console war stuff. You got to solidify and help build the base and the structure for your preferred platform now. And you got to speak up in order to do it. Because by you capping for all this stuff right now, you're just helping dig the grave for this platform. The casual first strategy is not working. Relying on Game Pass and xCloud and waiting until 2022 is not going to work. They have to grab mind share now. They got to do something now. Or there will be no future. Period. And that's it from your boy MM2K. Hey, let me know what you think about what I have to say in the comment section below. Because who cares what I think? You know what I'm saying? But like I always, cause, cause, like I always tell you. You can come with me and come at me. It don't matter to your boy. It's all about diversity of thought here. And I appreciate it. But if you did like what I had to say. You can catch me on the corner of every boulevard. You know what I'm saying? Check out the links below to follow me. And hey, yo, I'll do a show with your peoples. Okay. Neethos. Dirk Griggity. Snow Bunny. It's called Scram Punks. We do it every week. On my boy Dirk Griggity's channel. Check out hashtag Scram Punks for more information on that. Follow my brethren, the Broadband Bullies. We out here doing the damn thing. Check out the Discord link. Check out the Patreon link. You know what I'm saying? Check out that gear because it's fly. And last but not least, follow your boy on his biggest project to date. It is called the NRO. The NRO project or podcast is one of the shows. Excuse me. Rather, the name of the channel is the Hard Not Digital Culture. We are doing everything in regards to hardcore, gritty culture as it relates to gaming cinema you know what i'm saying media whatever the case may be you're gonna want to check it out we're doing game streams all that stuff and with that all being said you guys have a wonderful wonderful gaming day peace